I have to tell you about the time I sued a magazine as well as a wedding venue because they use my photo for commercial purposes as a print ad in a magazine without my permission whatsoever. And spoiler alert, I won. If you're a photographer, you've probably had your work stolen. Whether you know about it or not, just for the record, you've probably had your work stolen. We get pissed about it, right? You know, we have somebody maybe reposted it on social media and we're like, that's mine and you didn't tag me at the very least. Not that we work for exposure, by the way. We are not paying our bills with exposure. That's not how that works. But you know, if someone's gonna share our image, we'd love a tag. Now, are we gonna go after our clients? Or maybe if you're a wedding photographer, you're gonna go after the client's bridesmaids for posting a photo without tagging you god i hope not that's just not going to be good for business but the second you have another business use your photos and make money off them essentially use them for commercial purposes for advertising purposes this is when it starts to get tricky and if you're not aware of this you can sue for up to a hundred thousand dollars this is federal copyright law this is not like me deciding this you can sue for up to a hundred thousand dollars and seek the damages for like the lawyer's fees and things so it's no small i know zoe i know i know, I know. It's no small thing to have someone steal your photos. Like it's not okay. So uh, back to my story. I'm a wedding photographer in New Jersey at the time. Uh, I'm, I'm still a wedding photographer in New Jersey in Texas and around, but I think my business was roughly five, six years old. I am really big on vendor relationships and I want to have venues post my work and what I was doing at the time. If you use my images for social media, please tag me. If you want to use my images for anything else commercial, please contact me and we can work it out. In a nutshell, if they're gonna use my photos for a billboard, they're gonna use my photos for Facebook ads, meta ads, or Google ads, they're gonna use them for an ad in a magazine. That's where we sort of cross the line a little bit from me sharing photos and you know us just collabing and yeah, a little bit of exposure left and right works versus you're just flat out making money off of my photos. Because if they're using my photo for a Google ad, like there's no credit. Right, And even if there was credit, the hyperlink is to them, not me. So I'm never gonna get anything from that versus if we're collabing on social media or they're posting something of mine on social media and they tag me, the probability is a lot higher that they're going to click on that photo tag and be like, oh, that's Vanessa. You know, I would love to hire her to do photos, right? There's a line with that. And commercial photographers, I'm one of those too. Like we make a lot of money for creating imagery for commercial use, right? So that's that end of it. So this incident happened with a reception hall and this was probably 10 years ago now, I believe somewhere around 10 years ago. And the reason why I even decided to sue them was because I was actually speaking on Creative Live during photo week and they had I forget if he was a photographer also if or if he was there just to talk about copyright laws but it was a lawyer I believe from Ohio and I apologize if I forget his name that specialized in copyright law and I was actually telling him about what happened which was a wedding venue in New Jersey who I gave permission to use low resolution files in order to use on social media or their website, but specifically said, if you want them for anything else, you have to contact me. They created an ad, full page ad with my photo on it and placed that ad into, I believe it was the Knot magazine at the time. I was lamenting about this and this lawyer, I think his name is Craig, maybe Craig Henderson, he said, hey, you know you can sue them for up to $100,000 plus lawyer's fees, right? And I'm like, no. Now there's a couple of rules around that. You do have to register copyright and that until recently, that was like a huge pain in the butt. If you have ever gone onto the government's website and tried to copyright your imagery, like, oh my God, it is horrible. It is a horrible experience, but rights click has now made that a lot easier. And the fun part is, I believe you have something like 90 days after that first publication of that image in order 
to register the copyright because that's where you get that full hundred thousand dollars or whatever it is maybe it's changed you have to have that work registered now you always own the copyrights regardless that's federal law but when a photo is a registered copyright like that photo has been uploaded to the government's website that's when you can sue for that massive amount when without that it's only like a couple thousand dollars that step is absolutely crucial and really really painful until now you know what i might as well just tell you about rights click real quick because this is where it comes into play so rights click is a platform that makes that part really really easy for you. It was founded by two copyright experts with over 35 years of experience advocating for creators rights in this area. That's huge. And it was specifically designed not for big businesses. A lot of you watching this channel, myself included, we're just small creators. We're independent creators and they made rights click for us. So what does it do? It enables you as a photographer or artist of any kind to quickly and easily register photo groups and organize your copyright portfolio at the same time. So rights click takes care of the spreadsheets and all the other hassles of the copyright system. I mean, I'm telling you right now, it's insane. It's just insane. That one photo that I copy right registered after I found out about the infringement. I feel like it took me hours just for that one photo. And naturally as a photographer, you take a lot more photos than just that one. So they are handling all of that. And they also include enforcement tools that anyone can use to respond to infringements to their photos. Step one for me actually was this lawyer, but RightsClick gives you some tools where, you know, you don't necessarily have to go right to a lawyer. Maybe you're just going to send a cease and desist. Maybe you're just going to send an invoice. I dare you just, I dare you just send an invoice. They have tools for you to respond to those infringements. They've got support that can help you out. And there is a free one month trial. If you're going to register your copy, right at all i really suggest you do it through this program because they make it a lot easier and the last thing you want to do as a photographer is to spend your entire life trying to register your photos instead of taking photos anyway check them out i've got a link for you below so you can read more about them their website take a look back to my story so now there are two people who committed that copyright infringement first it was the venue that provided the artwork without permission for all of the artwork. And then secondly, it was the magazine's fault for not checking that copyright and making sure. Now, I'm sure they had a forum where somewhere this wedding venue checked off like, oh yeah, I have the rights to use this and they didn't. I send them both. I feel like it's a cease and desist. Uh, basically, it's threatening to bring them to court to talk about that, like both of them. So naturally what happens at that point is Condé Nast, uh, who owns the knot, went after the venue, basically said, this is your problem. You have to deal with it. Uh, and I think we took that into the settlement. Long story short, I got a settlement. We settled outside of court. We didn't have to go to court. If I had gone to court, would I have made more money? Yeah, absolutely. But you know, time and headache. And on top of that, I was already ruining a vendor relationship with that hall and it was a relationship that i wanted what ended up happening actually conde nast did settle they paid uh, i believe it was twenty thousand dollars i can't remember if it was 20 or 10 uh, because whatever they paid i know they invoiced that venue for us so the venue had to reimburse them for what they were settling with for me so i knew that happened and then with copyright lawyers, and I believe this is usually the case, they just split the winnings with you. So it was no risk for me. And if you're gonna go after someone, I don't think it's a risk for you. You're just splitting whatever was awarded, which is awesome. So I just basically get a check in the mail. I forget again, if it was like 10,000 or uh, I got a $5,000 check because those half numbers are you know, messing up my memory at this point. But then the hall contacted me, was basically saying like, okay, you're suing us for this, but we already paid the magazine. Like, is there another way that we can get together and like figure this out? And even though I know the relationship was already ruined, um, and that's something to consider. If you're gonna go after someone for copyright infringement, think about the ramifications of that because you could easily sue someone and win, but is that $10,000 or whatever you're winning, maybe it is up to $100,000, is that number amount worth the relationship? Like if I had just had a good relationship with them, and I don't think it would have been a good relationship regardless, like would I have booked more business in that relationship with that venue 
over time. I don't know, right? That's a what if. But when I sat down with them, you know, they, I have to say, I don't even think they apologized. I feel like they said something along the lines of like, oh, we had turnover and we just had all these images and we thought we had permission to use them. To which of course I pulled up the email where I flat out say like, oh, but that person's not here anymore and whatever. So I did make a deal with them and I said, well, help me book like 10 brides here. They sent me the lead list and I got them marketing materials. And I will say I booked one more wedding there. So they didn't really fulfill that part of the deal. Uh, not that it's up to them to like close deals for me, but that was supposed to be like, okay, you know, you can make up for this by putting me on your vendor list, sending me the leads, talking me up to the clients that are there. And I'm going to imagine they were just like, mm, yeah, we're not really going to do that because how is that enforceable? So they sent me the lead list, but that's about it. And I'm pretty sure I ruined that relationship, which kind of sucks, but I'm also kind of sure they were like owned by the mob or something anyway. And I think they went out of business like last year too. And at one time it was one of the premier venues in New Jersey. Now something to consider with all of this, and maybe this is something you bring to rights click and their support. I mean, I know the answer to this legally, but what does this look like in relationships? Something I've been hearing from a lot of you is that venues either before or during the wedding are making photographers sign over the rights to the photos, the use rights to the photos that they take because their thing is like, well, you're on my property and this is my property you're taking photos of. So therefore I get, you know, all rights to your images. And it's like, that's not how copyright law works. I've also seen where other vendors are doing this, florists and makeup artists, in their contracts, having their clients sign, saying that they have the rights to use all of the images from their professional photographer of the wedding, which is of their work, right? And I don't need to be rude with the quotations because it is their work. It is. Their clients are signing away the photographer's rights. That's also not enforceable by law. Like that's not how the law works. My client cannot decide to give away my usage or copyrights as a photographer. It doesn't work that way, but it's a new thing that is happening. So just something to be careful about as photographers, as videographers. And you know, I understand where the gray line is a little bit. We'll look at it this way with models, right? I need a model release to be able to use those photos for my own commercial purposes. Do I need a model release for photographing the art that's on the faces of the people I'm photographing or the art that's the florals that are all the way around or the fact that I'm on private property? You know, it reminds me of like, you can't photograph a wall mural that's on a street because it's someone's art and then use it in a commercial production. It reminds me of that. I, I don't know the answer. That part, I, I don't know. The only thing I do know is it's shady as hell. Anyone having the balls to be like, hi, I'm going to take all of your copyright rights away from you just because you know, you were hired to photograph this wedding. Like that's just not cool. I don't know. Let me know what you think. If you've had that experience, just tell me in the comments below. I thought I'd tell you this copyright story because actually it's one I've never told. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said this out loud because I think I was a little bit embarrassed about the fact that I won, but I really lost the relationship that I could have had with that venue. So I really haven't wanted to share this story before, but when rights click came up and you know, wanted to work with me, I was like, you know what? I have the perfect story that goes along with why something like rights click would be important because I remember it being such a pain in the butt to register. Anyway, let me know what you think about all these copyright things. Have you had copyright infringements before? What have you done about it? And what do you think about this new thing where other wedding vendors are trying to take away the copyright rights that are afforded to us by law for uh, photographers? Let me know on the comments. Um, by the way, I'm Vanessa Joy. I photograph weddings and things and I uh, hope you stick around. Bye.